Oh boy, Microsoft, you might have just done something really, really dumb. What is going on, guys girls? It's Ghost Robo, and I'm here to give you the official, real, concrete details on Xbox One's online policy and their trade-in policy. This was just revealed by Microsoft. This is official. This is confirmed. Documentation by them, unless they change it at some point down the road after massive negative feedback and what has been revealed is first for online, yes, it is required to connect to the internet once every day on your console in order for you to maintain playing games. So you have 24 hours to be offline, and this creates a whole slew of problems. Man, I sometimes travel for conventions, and I usually just bring my Xbox 360 so I can record along the way. I'm there for three days, and, and connecting to hotel internet with an Xbox is really, really tricky and hard, and, and sometimes it just doesn't work, and, and so I'd just be out of luck. Or if you are at vacation at grandma's house, I did this constantly when I was younger with the GameCube and N64. I'd bring my system to my relatives for the holidays, and, and they didn't have great internet or Wi-Fi. It didn't even exist back then, so I couldn't connect. And I'm sure there's plenty of people that vacation places or travel places or even live places where that connection every single day is not going to be possible, and it's a really strange move. I was, I was very staunch on the fact that they would not require always online, like constant connection a la SimCity um, and that whole debacle, which they didn't. You know, they it's not a always online system, but this is just about the next silliest thing. Um, you know, I don't want to call it a stupid move. I think that's the easiest thing to, to label it as because I still think they're going to sell a boatload of these systems. You know, I, I read one article where they're talking about how many of the consumers that are going to buy an Xbox One don't have a reliable internet connection? And that's, that's a pretty good point. While it doesn't justify the action, while it still makes it pretty lame in my opinion, it is a pretty solid point that if you are going to buy this new four or $500 system for your HDTV, most likely you have an internet connection. And how, what, what percentage of people are not going to have a good internet connection yet want to spend the money on an HDTV and an Xbox One? And, and that, that percentage is probably very small. But I just think it's a really... Uh, it's, you know, it's it's a case-by-case -case basis where some people won't be affected. You know, me, for the most part, 350 days out of the year, it won't, it won't affect me. My Xbox One will be at home. It'll be connected. It'll be great. It'll be fine. But it it I think more than more than directly impacting people's, you know, daily usage or their weekly, monthly, yearly usage, it sets a bad tone is what it does. It's not the greatest PR move, and I'm guessing that's why they're getting out of the way now before E3, so you can be all hyped about games. And again... This doesn't change anything about the quality of the, the titles released for the Xbox One, about the awesomeness of the new controller, about some of the cool features with Kinect 2.0, and the upgraded hardware that the Xbox One obviously has inside. I just think it's a sour note to kind of start your console train on by saying, hey, we are going to require this, this once-a-day connection. And for me, the big issue is, is what happens when their servers go down? What if I'm screwed out of playing because they can't keep it up. There was definitely times this generation where Xbox Live was down, where PlayStation Network was down for a long time. I'm sure many of you remember that whole fiasco. And at that point, how, how nitty-gritty does it get that, like, I paid for a game, and I can't use it because it's your fault, you can't keep your servers up? Now, they have increased the amount of servers hugely, and so I'm assuming they are confident that they won't go down and that there won't be trouble, but you never know. You never know. Um, if you're playing on a different console, you can play offline for one hour, which is just almost useless at that point. So if you transfer your, your gamer tagging profile and it's offline. Uh, and again, what this is all trying to do is to limit piracy, limit abuse of the system. Uh, they have that thing where once you install a game once, it doesn't require the disc. And I'm sure that hackers and, and clever people and kids could find a way to manipulate the system so they could basically share one disc to install it a ton of times if online was not required. And they specifically did note, um, I'll put the quotes in the description actually, they specifically did note that um, this was mainly to check the, you know, check your titles, check what was going on, make sure it was you, all that stuff. So it's a very intrinsically tied to piracy and all that. Now, the other interesting thing is how they're handling trade-ins, and this one, I think, is a little bit of a brighter spot for them, because basically what they've said is they are going to leave it up to the publisher, and if that is not the biggest passing of the buck ever, I don't know what is, because that takes all the blame off Microsoft. Now, if a company like EA or Activision or Ubisoft or whoever wants to not allow used games, they are going to bear the brunt of that fury. They are going to deal with all the complaints and the crying and the, the forum wars and all that junk that goes on. And Microsoft will be like, hey, we gave them the choice. Um, it's a little bit of a, of a tricky sentence because it says you know that they can trade them in at participating retailers, whatever that means. Because these are activated games, I'm guessing that it's going to have to be some 
something that they're going to have to set up with whether they partner with GameStop or Best Buy or a bunch of places or just GameStop or how that works, I don't know, in order to sort of cancel the activation and then redo the activation. Because again, you're not going to bring your system into GameStop to trade in a game. So if you trade in a game, they have to find a way to have you, I don't know, log into your account and click the button to agree to deactivate the game. Or maybe they have some special code that instantly can scan the game, know what code that has, and, and then you know wipe it out. I would assume it has to be a local thing. Again, I think relying on the customer to log in or bring in their system is all kind of ridiculous and a little too complex. So probably it'll involve them either having some override ability to basically nullify the the privileges of that specific disk's code and then resell it to someone else. Um, but it's up to publishers, and I can definitely see some publishers who have clearly come out against used games this this generation say, hey, we're not going to deal with it, no used games. Or, or create their own program, right? EA's got that whole origin service. Um, other other U Ubisoft has basically their own service. What if they did something where they said, hey, we're not going to allow trade-ins per se, but if you want to delete this code, you know, this activation from your system, uh, we'll give you $25 in store credit to our, you know, library of titles for Xbox One because everything is going to be available digitally. Um, and, and part of all these bumps and bruises, you have to realize, is, is in that transition to a digital future. And... Games are going away as a physical medium, and it's becoming a thing of the cloud, a thing of the interwebs like music has become, like a lot of television and movies have become, um, and games are trending that way. Now, games are the priciest form of media um, that has made that transition so far, um, or is trying to make that transition, and it will still take some years before it's officially complete, uh, but all of this, you know, you put the disc in, you no longer need the disc, basically all you're buying is an activation. The disc is just a little pretty window dressing so that they can find something to place on store shelves and not piss off retailers that they need to sell their actual console, because they can't, can't sell the hardware digitally, um, but it's, it's all moving towards how are we going to just sell you the, the digital thing, and, and I hope that even though this is a little bit a little bit weird, a little bit disgruntling, a little bit awkward, and, and in some cases downright frustrating, that eventually it will lead to a better future for, for gaming, where we can have more sales, where we can have better deals. I hope that these companies take advantage of this opportunity, transitioning to digital distribution, to do what Steam has done in a lot of ways by creating the ever sale. You know, you can put a game on sale whenever you want, because they have an infinite number of codes they can distribute of copies, or not infinite, but just about, and that would be really cool if, if all of a sudden, you know, we can see Halo 5 be on a one weekend sale for $29.99 on the Xbox One marketplace. Hey, that's cool, and that's that's worth dealing with the whole shebang of, of no used games and all that because it, it basically supersedes used games. And possibly the weirdest part of all this, though, is the way that they're handling giving games to friends. So it's – and this one won't be talked about as much. It's not used games. It's not, you know, online stuff, but it's – Probably the craziest, most lame of all, which is that your friend, if you want to give them a game, you know, you can you can bring it over to their place and log into your account, and that's all kosher and fine. But if you want to give it to them where they can play it without you being on your profile, being there with them, um, like loaning a game, it can only be done once. Once, and then bye bye the activation is dead in the water. And that friend must have been a friend on your friends list for 30 days minimum. So if someone buys a brand new Xbox One, you want to bring over games and be like, yeah, check them out. Eh, they, they can't do that. It's just a weird thing. I understand it, though. I understand that they're trying to just stamp out piracy, used games, push towards the digital future, and basically control the entire ecosystem from start to finish of these games and their life cycle. I understand that from a business standpoint. I just think it seems unfortunate, especially the younger kids, you know, Trading games, loaning games, and rentals too. They're not going to have any system for renting games when the Xbox One launches. And I would assume that, again, PlayStation 4 is going to have very similar policies on a lot of these fronts. And, and especially when a new system launches, man, that rental business is very important to go and check out. You know, that's what people do. They, they don't want to go spend $70 or $60 on four different new games that they don't know the quality of. They'd rather go rent them. So they, they sure as heck better have good demos for all these launch titles. Um, and, you know, obviously some people just buy because it's their favorite series or they need it on launch day or whatnot. But, man, it's kind of weird that they're supposedly working on a rental system. I don't know. Working on a rental system, we'll see if that turns into anything. But this friend thing, give it to one friend, and then if they wanted to give it to somebody else, nope. It's just it's just a whole transition. It's another stepping stone, I guess, in the future of humanity, per se. Like, you give books to your family member. They could give it to their mom, to their cousin, to their friend. You give someone a DVD, they can send it all over the place but here if you give a game to a friend 
it's gone. Now, I don't know how many uses a game can be resold. You know, when it's with these retailers that partner with Microsoft, if I sell a game once, can it only be sold once? Like, if I buy a used game, if I buy a game used, do I then not have the opportunity to resell it back? Can you only resell new games? There's still some gray areas, but at least we have a much more concrete picture, and some of it is just straight up weird. Remember that the PC has been doing this for a while. Remember that PC has gone all but, you know, exclusively digital. Um, Steam has no way of returning your games or trading them into GameStop, and people are pretty cool with that because they have such a good, friendly ecosystem, such a good, friendly community, and have treated the consumer right by offering a lot of sales and low prices uh, You know, across the board. A lot of games release on Steam for $49.99 when they're out on console for $60, and that's a, a reason to buy on Steam and also a reason to not complain about some of the you know parts that aren't as friendly for customers. So I don't think this is going to drastically impact Microsoft in any way. I don't think it's going to shift their their sales numbers. Oh god, now they're going to sell so many less. I mean, most people aren't going to know this. When you go into the store, your mom and pop, your your grandma and grandpa, your whoever, they're going to be like uh, buying the system. Any anyone who is not in the know specifically about the video game industry will have no clue probably about most of this stuff. Um I worked at Best Buy before I did YouTube for a couple of months and uh they they basically were very – you weren't encouraged to give a whole lot of information to to customers. You were just basically trying to sell as much product as you can. Um, and a lot of people there didn't know all the details that I knew or that didn't know – you know, workers, employees. They didn't know all the intricacies of some of these systems, even with 360, and it's just going to get more complicated from here. Uh, last note, I think PlayStation 4 is going to follow a very similar – uh, line along both of these policies. I don't think they're going to be like, you can do whatever you want. I'm guessing there's going to be some online verification for them. I don't know if it'll be a day or if they'll try to play a uh, a you know good brownie points card and make it three days or a week or what. Uh, and used games, I assume they have a similar fashion thing where it's up to the publisher or whatnot. I don't think Sony's going to say, hey, everything's free and clear. You can be offline as long as you want and trade and use games and all that. They might not be as rigid about it as Microsoft, but expect them to unveil some policy uh, in the coming weeks, months before the release. Hope this video is informative to you. Let me know what you think in the comments below. How does this policy affect you? Are you somebody that is going to be drastically impacted by that 24-hour check-in every single day of the week? Or is it not a big deal? You don't really care. You're always online. You're usually playing at home, and so it's not a big deal. Same with you as games. Is it cool that it's up to publishers? At least that gives the opportunity for games to be traded in. Before, it was like, nothing can be traded in, uh-oh. Now, at least there's some leeway, and it could create some really tricky situations where EA and Activision might get a lot of hate, and hopefully they will choose the better path, whatever it may be, whether it's offering their own credit or, or some way to really treat their buyers right. And, you know, money is the, the calling card, the biggest thing in this industry, like every industry, so of course they're going to cut corners and, and do what they can to turn a profit, but I'm hopeful that by putting the choice in the publisher's hands, some of them, at least some of them, will make the right call. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Drink some much of and task day. Cannot wait for E3 to find out more about both of these big new boxes. Until that time, though, guys, it goes a fantastic day. Drink some hot chocolate. We'll see you all later.